about South African Airways. Now it has been a very turbulent couple of years, some would even say a turbulent decade, not just for the airline itself, for its pilots, for its staff, for its uh, customers as well. So where are we as far as the relaunch, as we're being told it is, of the new SAA? Or well, let's speak to the man who's in the pilot seat of this. I'll have a few more of the uh, uh, airline cliches to throw in there soon, won't I? Uh, acting and interim CEO Thomas Kokolo uh, joining us from SAA. I promise I'll stop saying you're in the pilot seat for maybe one one more time, uh, this interview. But where are we uh, on the uh, relaunching of SAA? When are we going to see you back in the skies? Um, well, good morning to your viewers and good morning to the loyal customers of SAA. And thanks for the opportunity just to give an update on where we are. Um, as you are aware that uh, when we finished Business Rescue end of April, uh, we had to start uh, the audit of um, SAA. And uh, indeed, um, the regulator did audit us. And out of that, we had about um, three findings. And um, those findings have been addressed. The one that was delayed was the one that had to do with pilots training. As you are very much aware that uh, we were in a deadlock in terms of pilots and they were on strike and we had to lock them out. And I'm pleased to say that uh, two weeks ago, we managed to, to settle that particular deadlock, which is a very historic uh, moment in SAA. And uh, what we have done is that since then, we have gotten to work in terms of training the pilots. We have finalized the training um, this Saturday, and uh, we have put a portfolio of evidence together that we have submitted to the regulator. And um, our hope and expectation is that the regulator will look at the evidence that we have provided with regard to those particular findings this week. And uh, by Friday, hopefully, the expectation is that uh, we can then have our AOC back, meaning that uh, we'll then officially be ready to operate. Uh, from a restart date point of view, um, we have segmented it into two. And um, if the AOC is confirmed or the operating license is confirmed um, by this week, what we plan to do is that uh, as early as August, we want to get back into the cargo. As you know, that uh, cargo has been one of our key uh, performing uh, business units as well from as way back as 1994. Mm. So cargo probably will go in, uh, in first before we talk about the passenger uh, restart date. For the passengers, we have been observing the... Um, COVID-19 um, um, uh, restrictions, and uh, we are quite pleased that uh, the president has managed to ease that out and has opened the skies uh, for us to then be able to participate. Uh, because of the announcement of the president yesterday, we are meeting this week with the key stakeholders, including the shareholder, of course, just to do final touch-ups, and then we'll be able to issue a communication soon, either this week or early next week, in terms of our officially restart date. Do you have, do you have aircraft to fly? Oh, yes, yes, we do have aircraft to fly. Unfortunately, we're much more smaller than where we were before. <laughs> We've got about eight uh, aircraft that uh, we'll be using, and there's two that is arriving uh, mid-August. So, indeed, we've got uh, aircraft to fly. And let's talk a bit about uh, some of the other aircraft, which seems to be under your wing, if you will, a slightly different color palette uh, to the SAA uh, tailfin. Uh, it's a bright orange uh, airline as well, Mango Airlines. Uh, where are we on that? A subsidiary, of course, going to lean on you for support while you lean on government for support. So what's happening with Mango? Thank you so much. And um, I want to just address the subsidiaries uh, holistically quickly. Uh, at Airshefts, we are busy with Section A189, which is the restructuring. We are busy consulting with the Labour there, and we hope that it will be finalised soon. At SA Technical as well, we are busy with uh, Section 189. Also, it involves restructuring. It will be over soon as well, as we are busy discussing with the union. Um, the situation as Mango, it is, it is quite unfortunate. We are aware at a group level that um, there are delayed salaries. And um, what we can say is that the board and the shareholder have agreed that uh, Mango will go into business rescue. Yeah. We are con currently co consulting and uh, with the with the labor as well. We're consulting with all key stakeholders and even with our attorneys in terms of how we can manage that particular process. Remember, the issue at Mango was with regard to the funding that they involved all the subsidiaries, about 2.7 billion. We we are optimistic that um, as uh, we get into this week and um, by by end of uh, this week or early next week, we should be able to provide communication with regard to that particular relief. We, we, it saddens me, especially when employees on a monthly basis, they are not getting their salaries. And then we have been working very hard to improve that situation. And we hope that we can make uh, some communication this week or early next week regarding the funding for the subsidies. Uh, can we talk a little bit, uh, just before I let you go, uh, Thomas, about the Section 189s? You mentioned the uh, SAA technical, uh, for example, as well. What kind of impact uh, is that going to have on the functioning of the newly relaunched SAA whenever we get there? We, we have been very careful with Section 189 so that uh, we don't lose the core skills. 
So we, we, we are very cautious, very strategic about that. But at this stage, the assessment is that the SA technical will still be able, will still be functional in terms of servicing our aircraft. Remember, we're also not bringing the, the whole fleet that we had before, so we are much more smaller. And also at Airshelf as well, we see that um, we, as a result of Section 189, and based on the plans that we have, uh, we'll still be able to function out. The subsidiaries will still be able to render services to us when we resume flying. Mm. Uh, before I let you go this morning, when we talk about uh, the uh, South African Airways as a business, there's, there's kind of two issues you're dealing with at the moment. One is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, to stop being reliant on government as far as bailouts is concerned. The other is, of course, to try and be a profitable uh, business as well. Is there a, a dual balance plan here, or is it right now just simply trying to avoid asking government for money? Um, the plan that we have is that, as you know, that uh, our minister has uh, announced the prospect of a strategic equity partner. So we are observing that part, which we believe that it will provide relief as we move forward. On our side, to ensure that we are also sustainable, we are very careful in the routes that we select. We need to make sure that the routes that we select are very, 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 uh, um, um, we, can, we can sustain those. Mm. And more importantly, the costing on our side. We need to be very careful in terms of how we put the cost back into the market. So those are some of the things that we are putting in place. And I think uh, the next three months will be very key, make it or break it, in terms of us being able to remodel the business and being able to relaunch a business that can sustain itself and um, be able to render the quality service that it has always rendered before. And just a last question to you this morning, Thomas. Uh, back to the SAA technical and the air chefs. Uh, question before I let you go this morning. We spoke about the 189s, the retrenchments. How many jobs on the line at the moment? Um, it is very difficult to say. Um, what we are observing is that the conversations with labor is continuing. And uh, as soon as that uh, conversation comes uh, to... Uh, to, to, to the end, we will be able to provide an exact number of uh, the, the, the jobs that will be lost. But the key thing is that we're doing our utmost best to make sure that the, the impact on the job is not as negative as, um, as sometimes it is spoken about. So we're trying to make sure that uh, we minimize the impact on jobs. When is that conversation going to have, uh, have take place? Yeah, based on where, where, where we are, they've started working on it um, sometime last month. As you know, that some of these things can take long because there's a lot of consultation process. But we believe that um, in the next month, August, it should be much more clearer and uh, we should be able to bring it uh, to, to the end. Right, we appreciate uh, your time in speaking to us. a difficult time, isn't it, as the interim CEO of SAA, having a lot of questions thrown in about retrenchments, trying to be profitable, trying to not depend on government, and also uh, dealing with the uh, mango issue as well. Interim SAA CEO, uh, Mr. Thomas Kokolo, uh, joining us on the channel.